We love horror movies from the 70s and 80s And we watch them for two days straight And then we go write a book Now we're looking back at every title One at a time in this podcast that we put out monthly Once we've had an episode for every movie It's time to meet up for another shock marathon Oh yeah, the bu- the button's red, which means we're recording another exciting episode of Shock Marathon's podcast. I'm Matt Farley here with Ava Scalzo. Hi. Charlie Roxburgh. Greetings. Tom Scalzo. Hello. And we we know this movie as under the preferred title <laughs> of, as, oh, of yeah. Son of Blob. Oh, I love that title. It's not the son of Blob. It's just son of Blob. <laughs> <laughs> or son of the Blob. No. Oh, I only know it as son of... Oh, oh you're saying... Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they had two <laughs> options to use the word the. And they said nah both times. <laughs> son of Blob. <laughs> son of Blob. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's so vague. It could, it could be any Blob. Yeah. Blob. Especially since the, the original movie is called The Blob. Exactly. I know. It's not a blob. It's the blob. Uh, you cast it on the original, yeah. Now, uh, I feel like it's better known as Beware the Blob. Um, do you guys feel the same way? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a much I don't worse even know. Title. I don't know where we got. We must have had a tape. Yeah. It's not a blob, but I don't know. I don't have it. I don't know where it, you know, if we must have rented it somewhere. Must have been movie scene. Good old movie scene in uh, Hooksit, New Hampshire, or Derry. They had quite a collection back then. Yeah. All right. Uh, Son of Blob. No, d- no one. Uh, listeners, do not call it Beware the Blob. It's always going to be Son of Blob. It uh, starts with some bombastic music over the title and then quickly um, switches over to more carnival style music over the opening credits while we watch a little cat uh, wandering through a field for <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> two minutes and 30 seconds. Oh wow! Did you, did you time it? That's right. You bet I did, Charlie. <laughs> and if you, it's actually specifically credited in the opening credits. Animal sequences by, which is crazy that it's credited. But then the fact that it's credited to one of the most famous cinematographers of the 20th century, Dean Cundey. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Just wow! Wow! He doesn't that's very even talk about that. Very like, much, hey so. Dean, hey Dean, you want to waste your talents for a few minutes? Come here. I got a kitten. We got a kitten and we got a field. <laughs> Work your magic. So then we go in to the house by the field and we meet we meet a husband and wife, Chester and Marion or Miriam? I don't know. I couldn't quite I get it. I thought it was Miriam. Miriam, Miriam, whatever, yeah. Um they got a, uh, so their husband wife team, uh, she comes home with the groceries. He's he's yelling from inside to see if she picked up the salmon eggs as he requested. Uh, it turns out she did. Um he also wants to know about the beer which she has um I guess she put it in his tackle box or she just knows where it is. And so then we go inside and learn that he's hollering from a tent inside the living room, which uh <laughs> We need to discuss uh, further. Uh, just is so. What's the idea? Why? Why is this happening, Tom? Why? <laughs> the, I mean, the only explanation I can think of is he was getting ready for a camping trip and he wanted to put the tent up, <laughs> make sure you know he knew how to do it and uh, okay. get everything you know in its right place, and th- then take it back down again for the real trip. But they or don't he's, explain he's that crazy. to us. Or he's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he did just come back from an expedition at the North Pole, so maybe he needs to acclimate right. so he can't go back to being in a normal bedroom, <laughs> so he needs to live in the tent for a little bit. Both, But that's yeah. probably stretching. No, those are both really good explanations, but the, it's definitely not even... It's just happening. No one comments on it at all, Charlie. And I yeah. guess they want to be funny, too. I don't know if they're, they succeed in that part. Yeah, I don't know. They're, they're both charming characters, so so I do kind of like it. But I wonder if it was a production thing where they're just like, "Hey, this, we're supposed to film outside with this in this with this tent, or have the couple camping." And then they were like, "Well, that's a lot of work. Just you want to just put it up in the living room, and you know, maybe, maybe something like it's that. A lot easier it was to film. it was like a bad idea on the set that no one had the good sense to um, 
to shoot down, you know? But it's I memorable. Feel like there were a lot of drugs ingested during the no, making of this movie. Yeah, you're probably right. You're really, no, seriously. <laughs> and they're all just so, laughing about like, oh, this is so funny. But, but then uh, to anyone else, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, so that's happening. She finds a frozen specimen in the freezer, some like a uh, steel container. Um, she takes it out and puts it on the counter. Uh, she complains that he was away for three months building a pipeline that no one wants, which is, uh, we, we love that line the first time <laughs> around, I think. Didn't we guys? Oh yeah. 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 I remember that and the tent inside. I mean, it, it's wacky, but when you're watching so many movies like we do during shock marathon, some of the wacky stuff is what sticks. Very even if it's not Even if it's not hilarious or great, it's like, oh my gosh, I remember that, yeah. The cat comes through the window, the woman feeds it, a fly lands on the specimen and is engulfed by the old blob. Let's listen to the woman, who we think her name is Miriam, something like that, but let's listen to her talk to the cat as it eats. He was absolutely ravenous, really starving. Your mommy treats you badly? No. That's right. Just stuff your face. Absolutely make a pig of yourself. Do you have a secret life? I bet you have a secret life. Poor baby. You were neglected. You were neglected. Chester! Yeah, so, I mean, they're just filling up... Uh, they're just filling nobody up. Nobody wrote that. <laughs> no way, right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Just, it can't be. Although it seems like it was dubbed even. Too. It feels like it was dubbed a little bit at times. But who knows? Who knows? It, it's just a lot of meandering. Um, so she goes in to talk to Chester without noticing that the blob is coming out of the canister. A piece of the blob lands on the cat in front of the cat. It drags the cat out the window. So I think that's the end of the cat. Is that, is that the end of the cat? Is the cat dead? Uh it's like ab- absorbed into the blob. Uh, it's understood. So the cat keeps getting bigger yeah. and bigger. The woman <laughs> goes outside to look for the cat, who apparently is named Samuel, and the blob rolls up and kills the woman. Um, and now we meet Leslie. Okay, so now we cut to our, our other group of characters. They're planning a party. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're building a robot for the party too. Like this is a really what is going on with that robot? Which never pays off. Yeah. Is that am I right, guys? That that's not not even seen in action at the party. I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, something as extravagant as building a robot. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Also, Farley, I, I looked it up on IMDb, and if her name is Marion. There we have it, Marion. She dies right there, but now at least we knew her name. She was good. I <laughs> liked her a lot. You know, I even Chester. I I kind of liked him too. Yeah, um, the blob looks pretty good, rolling around sometimes. Heck didn't yeah. it, guys? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And, well, what the only thing I had an issue with was the fact that the this blob like would have like the like it's like tentacles, like tentacles. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the, I mean, the in the original movie that that. That doesn't happen, and the original is so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. They didn't. It's go like the, uh, it's a tough. This is a, this has this already. This movie already faced long odds because it's really hard to top the original Blob. Yeah, yeah. They True. went the only the best direction you can go is to not even try. You know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they did. All right. That's what they did. <laughs> so her friend is Lisa. Lisa's going to grab some supplies. Then we meet Cindy Williams. Of uh, Laverne and Shirley, she's with a hippie guy and a guitar. They go to check out the acoustics, they say, and they're going to end up in some big, uh, big pipe. Is that right? What do you call that? A tunnel or whatever? Yeah, um, like a storm drain. Storm drain, tunnel. just like uh, in Sammy, actually. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, back to Chester. He's watching TV. Is he's watching? Is he the one who's watching the Blob on TV? That's mm-hmm. yeah. shameless, very shameless. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, the it's Ripper and Blood Cult. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and okay, now um, it's a lot of cross cutting between these characters. But we're, now we're gonna meet Dick Van Patten, who chants the classic uh, chant: "One, two, three, we're going on a hike." He's with some Boy Scouts. They spot a mustard plant. And um, he shares his um, his knowledge with the must about the mustard plant. He knows all about it, right, Charlie? 
He does almost uh, some more stuff that might have been improvised on the on the day, or just as he's walking right. around making stuff up. But he's kind of funny. Again, you know, it's it's silly and it's it's wacky, but um, he's positive and he's you know he's got a lot of happy energy and it's it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Frankly, something about it. I like it better. I liked it better this time than I did the first time. Um, perhaps because it was a good uh, Tom and Ava. Did you watch uh, like a nice? Clear quality version of this movie, or was it a murky we VHS? It Amazon. Okay, yeah, yeah, it was I thought, okay. That, well, compared to when we watched it, on v, all I remember is just like darkness in the VHS version. This this looked darn good. Yeah. I thought. Um, all right, so yeah, the mustard. Um, back to Chester. He's watching the blob on TV again. He's about to sit in his chair where the blob is sitting, waiting for him. And but first we cut again back to the Boy Scouts, and then Lisa drives by and talks to them. She, um, they all give her some of the mustard flowers, I guess. Mustard plant flowers, is that right, Charlie? Yeah. Yep. After a brief interaction, the Scouts charge up the hill. So I mean, just like basically, we're just being introduced to all these characters, and um, and they're all over the top wacky. And it's mostly it's mostly okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So it turns out Lisa's on her way to Chester and Miriam's. She walks in and finds Chester as he's being devoured by the blob. She runs out of the house and drives away erratically, causing a guy in a station wagon to have a bunch of cans um, fall out of his car, and he's mad. Oh yeah. They were they must have been stowed quite precariously because as he <laughs> as that little He just had to swerve of, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and then cans come flying out. They I don't get it, but uh they kept most, uh, sorry, That's ahead, okay. They they kept with him for a while, you know? Well, I did not see yeah. that even this time through, I forgot. I did not see it becoming like a major plot point that it was. <laughs> it was just, you know, yeah. a bold choice, you know that uh this rivalry is going to follow through for the rest of the movie. <laughs> he, he's so mad about the, the cans. Yeah, it's uh, it's hilarious. Like most movies would just be an afterthought. Somebody gets bumped into you as you're streaming around a corner. It's like, no, wait, let's let's make that the central plot point. <laughs> it's, kind it. it's kind of brilliant. It's kind of brilliant. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, so we take a break from that excitement to see that the Boy Scouts have to purchase toilet paper from a cowboy on their way up on their hiking, camping adventure. Charlie, you, you seem like to think that might be a bit much. Yeah, of all the scenes that could have been edited out, and there's a lot in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. I'd probably vote for that one, even though it's fun. But uh, like, what a, know, so okay. a case could be made for the haircut scene, which which we'll get to. But um, that's a very strong case. Haircut <laughs> scene <laughs> must stay. <laughs> that's extra wacky. This one's just kind of weird and and yeah. not incredibly re- remarkable. But uh, so they left. Wow. They left on the hike but realized they didn't have toilet paper and then had to buy some from just the house that they passed. Yeah. Did they buy it or did they just get it for, did they just give it to them? I feel like there's a, some sort of money in, involved and weren't they saying they want the unused paper on the w- returned? Yeah. 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 I don't know, but it's, it was, too, it was ridiculous. Um, and it felt, I mean, this hike, it feels like they're hiking about, like, 300 yards from the center of town. <laughs> you yeah. know? Like, it, yeah. it didn't feel like they, they were that, they, they could have gotten it anywhere else. They could have walked five minutes to a store is the way it felt. But what are you going to do? All right. Yes. It, like, there are multiple things in this movie like that. But in reality, that might have been as good as they could do. Like, with the budget and the amount of days they had to shoot and having, like, seven or eight kid actors yeah it's you know it's super low budget and if you had to film that for real if there's a little hill there and you don't have to drive far that's what you're using yeah just turn the camera and we have another uh yeah yeah all right back to uh it's lisa right that's the name of the main girl she she interrupts um bobby in the dark room he's developing some photos why why not i guess and um she tells him what happens. He runs into the car with her, and they drive away. A lot uh, of cross-cutting. We're back to the Boy Scouts. 
And uh, I guess they're, the Boy Scouts are supposed to be um, like rubbing sticks together to make the fire. Is that right, Tom? Yeah. But tell us what the sneaky kid does. So one of the <clears throat> one of the kids uses a lighter to and some of the toilet paper, I think, right? Right. To, yeah. To actually start the the fire. You know, for uh, a movie that a movie that feels really random, watching it again, like. There are a lot of like through lines that you know, like the toilet paper comes back to play, the 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 um the lighter comes back to play, a lot yeah. of it. Yeah, it's kind of impressive. Like the, the cans falling out of the station wagon again. Like as random as it is, it's like uh, it was more focused than than I remembered upon second viewing. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought when Miss Clark drove by the scouts and then she went to Chester's house. Usually in the, in the movies, it would be like. You, you wouldn't see those characters bump into one another and right. know each other. Yes, yeah. So, um, Son of Blob. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a self-contained little weird universe, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like everybody was, knows everybody. And... Was this your first, first time for you, Ava, watching this? Yes. Okay. Yes. To me, like, the, I mean, it's kind of impressive that they do have those through lines because, I, like... It it doesn't feel like it's very written. Like I know, it, yeah. Mm. And so, like the fact that they actually did make those connections, or that things like, like you know, like the smoking gun that comes back in the third act, or like you know, like oh, th that shot, ha you know, like that. That's just surprising that it actually does. You do get those payoffs because, like, yeah. you you would never expect if it was like a normal independent like homemade right. horror movie so often it just doesn't yeah you, know? you didn't think they had it in them to have that much <laughs> for <laughs> forethought never know well, <laughs> but i think that's the thing with like all these people who are in this movie are they're all industry people yeah like, i know they're know, all like, professionals the guy right. the guy with the cans is like richard Stahl, who's in like a million movies like you see him all the time yeah mm -hmm. that's true and like it's, apparently Lisa Lisa is Chris Pine's mom. <laughs> oh really? It's I a, just saw yeah. that on IMDb. It's the oh, difference between like this and like the, and yeah. the next equivalent like a mo I think is Boarding House. You know, like Boarding House is a movie where you feel like some uh, guys got together and made a movie fast, but they didn't know what they were doing. Versus this is a guys get together and make a movie fast, but they're Larry Hagman and friends, and so you can tell yeah. the level of uh, professionalism. Anyway. Um, now, um, Lisa and Bobby drive by the station wagon again, and the driver's in the middle of reporting the incident as they, um, as they drive by. So that's carrying that, that big, uh, big plot right there. Uh, meanwhile, at Chester's mm -hmm. house, uh, Lisa and, and Bob, Bobby goes in and finds no evidence of the blob attack. It's, it's, it just, there's nobody there, but there's no sign of a struggle. So no one believes poor Lisa. Then we have an unnecessary attempt to scare us when we, we get a close up of of um, Lisa's face, <laughs> just before Bobby like grabs her face to get her attention. <laughs> as, as you do. Yeah, I know. I, I do that to Ava all the time. Yeah. She grabs her in front of her face. It's no just, one has ever done that in yeah, their life. It's, if you did that, I'd punch you. Yeah, <laughs> it's so weird and like such an obvious attempt to try to just have something happen, uh, but. You know, what are you going to do, Charlie? There's like this weird, maybe you guys picked this up. There's like this gentle skewering of, of hippies throughout the thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, there's some funny bits. Like, I don't know if the avocado sandwich talk is supposed to be this yeah, um, yeah, it kind seems of thing. Like because it, yeah. they someone like that might talk about sprouts and avocado like all the time. Yeah. Um, it's sort of weird. It, 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 it's not a very focused thing. It's just like this coloring to the, to the whole thing. Across the board, there's gentle ribbing of like hippies and <laughs> counterculture stuff in a way. You know, maybe it was yeah. just going on at the time and it was unavoidable. But... Right. Yeah. Most definitely, yeah. it was in the air. Yeah. Well, it was funny because like uh, when when they started going on about the avocado sandwich, like it was like Tom was like, "Guess where this was filmed?" And it was like just so obviously a like California. It was like so, um, you know, distinctively California. Yeah. In a good way. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. it. All right, so they come out of Chester's house. The policeman's there, uh, and they tell him what happened. 
Um, more cross cutting. We check in with Cindy Williams and her guitar player guy. He's singing about cocaine, and she thinks it's out of sight. They love the reverb of the room, and um, we soon realize that they're in that big uh, drainage tunnel. And, That's uh, a couple minutes without a cut there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't time this one, but yeah. Uh, then then uh, a police officer tells him to freeze. He wants to arrest them. He's got his gun drawn. <laughs> couple couple of hippies hanging out in the in the tunnel. I guess they were uh, smoking drugs, though, I guess, right? Yeah? Yeah, I think so, yeah. All right. His partner says that they were just called to help um, the situation at Chester's house, but this cop is like, no, we need to deal with these two hippies right now. Um, it's a little weird. Yeah, he see, the cop seems disturbed. He's an aggressive guy, yeah. big time, yeah. Yeah. But um, And then Cindy Williams and the guitar player try to warn him. Uh, so the first cop uh, goes to Chester's house, but the... The ba- the bad cop stays with you know, his gun drawn, but uh, then he gets engulfed by the blog, um, the blob. I just call it blog, <laughs> blob. Um, as Cindy Williams and the guitar player try to warn him, uh, and it, okay, then the scene ends <laughs> with an unnecessary uh, close up of some graffiti on the wall. Did any of you guys notice what word was written on that wall? Love? Love, that's it? right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's just like um, poignant. <laughs> Is it just poignant for that to happen, I guess? <laughs> no, they were like, dude, do you see what that says there? Just like pan or tip tilt to that. Yeah. Well, poignantly. 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 <laughs> poignantly. That's what Larry Hagman said that a lot. With me. <laughs> it gotta be, we got to be more poignant, guys. Come on. More poignant. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, uh, more officers come to inspect Chester's house. There's a bad comedy moment where one of them walks into the house. We don't see what happens, but we hear the sound of him bumping into something and saying, "Ow!" You guys remember oh, that? that was, I thought a good. I thought a good yeah. comedy. Moment. I like that because <laughs> they established it already. When Lisa went in the door, they they kept their garbage can or something right in in a bad place, right in when you went in the entryway. So. Yeah. This time, they didn't have to show it. You just got the audio. All right. Well, I missed the setup. Ava, um, whose side are you on for this I, one? I, I don't remember that <laughs> really either. All right. I thought it was you're going to abst- abstain from voting. That's fine. My <laughs> notes are like nuanced comedy right, right there. <laughs> well done. All right. Now we meet a brand new character. Oh, my goodness. A uh, hairy, hairy man. Frankly... Not as hairy as the barber makes him out to be. I mean, he's got a big old head of hair, but um, he walks in and says, are you a barber? The barber takes offense because he's a hairstylist or even an artist. He doesn't cut hair. He sculpts it. The, the barber says it'll be $400 for the haircut. The guy agrees, but he's got to prove <laughs> that he's got the cash. He finds cash all over his you know pockets everywhere with cash. It doesn't seem like he's pulling out four hundred dollars, but the it's enough for the barber, and um, and they discuss uh, what will become the first, uh, what will come first, the sculpting or the shampoo? Why are we watching this? Uh, and what what is the joke? The, this is the an- the anti hippie joke, I guess, Charlie. But I mean, basically, they're just setting up some brand new characters so they can kill them, I guess, right, Charlie? I want to hear what Tom and Ava have to say okay. about this one. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so m- the thing with the scene is that it just goes on forever. Yeah. Like it's like the, 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 the guy comes up and then the, he has to prove that he has the money. Then he finally sits down to get the haircut. And the guy's like, no one's touched your hair. Like no one has ever touched your hair. And the guy's like, well, my mother did. And no, oh. well, it's been a long time since she has. And I'm like, I mean, he's got a like, yeah, his hair's long, but it's not even like. Like you said, it's not like yeah. it's not like he's never had a haircut. He's just he's got shaggy hair and it looks like he hasn't combed it in a couple like a week. But it's not like, you know, yeah. it's not even dread. So clearly he has combed it. Yeah. Um, it's, so it's like I mean, and then it's just like <clears throat> then it cuts to the quick death and you're like, and that that done. We're done. That's the payoff. And it just doesn't feel worth it. Yeah. 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 Um. It, it, it's so there's so many layers to it. Probably I can read into it more than than I than is actually there, but 
I couldn't tell if the barber was being a little sarcastic or not. Does he really act like that? Or is he a gruff barber who just considers himself a barber and not a hairstylist? Yeah, that's and what how, I thought too. I thought he how, was Right, yeah. I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's clear. I think it's up to us to decide. And how sincere is the hippie person when he, when he, when he says, I meant no offense? And uh, Did he actually go in there just wanting a haircut? And yeah. when he agrees to that amount of money without cracking a smile or anything, th- that is, is something. Yeah. That is something. That is so open like to discussion. And, and, and I don't know what was going on there that um, it's very avant-garde. And uh, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, I think the filmmakers did not know. Either I don't think yeah, they knew. They what they, I don't think they up. knew what they maybe, were going for. Yeah, yeah, maybe if they were making it up in real time, you know. That's what happened. He says four hundred, and the other guy thought, "Well, my joke is going to be to play it straight and say I have it." Yeah. And yeah, yeah, there's kind of like innuendo feel there too. This is a lot going on in this couple minutes. I, I think that Hagman was able to get some actors to come in for a day and just say, like, "Hey, you're going to get." You pay. I, I actually saw an interview with him where he said this: they get scale for a day and they do a bit, and uh, that's why it's mostly the dialogue because that fills up time, and then they didn't want to take a lot of time filming the blob, so that happens real fast. Yeah. But um, that one particularly is is out there. It's, it's out way there. out there. Yeah. All right. Blob comes out of the sink. Yeah. Blob <laughs> comes out of the sink that they're using to wash the guy's hair. He dips the guy into the sink, which is now fully blobbed. So uh, that's it. That's the last we see of them, I think, too. It, uh, you know, I don't. What do you want? What do you want in a movie like this? Do you want to meet every character who's going to die? Do you want to meet them at least two times before the final death scene? I feel like I kind of like. There's something enjoyable, like Antlers Girl, you know, um, in the Silent Night, Deadly Night movies. Um, but t- generally, it, I want to meet every character before, you know, or the dorm that drip blood. You know, just someone dies at the beginning, and we're just like, who is that, and why do they die? Yeah. Um, you're, yeah. is everyone in? in th- you're right, everyone right. I mean, for me, I think it's like I, I, I don't have any objection to meeting these characters. It's like it's just the length of time that they spend. Like, obviously, I understand that they're trying to get to like a hundred and. Like is it, what is it, seventy four minutes at least or something to make it a full length yeah. Yeah. movie? Um, and yet, like I, I could have done with like a, a minute less of that whole scene because yeah. it lasts like two. It's it, the problem is that these scenes, or that if they had done a you know, because this movie is full of a bunch of quick cuts. Like, why did they not cut that scene? You know, like why not cut it? And like when he goes to get the money or whatever, do another scene, then come back. Like it just yeah. like it just feels like you spend all this time on this one scene. So it kind of actually slows the pace when you're actually trying to build some of the intensity because you're trying to like suddenly get more people and in, in, like in the blob. They're dying, you know. Yeah. And I yeah. would have liked I would have liked if we had just somehow connected like the long haired guy to the party. And who knows, maybe he's at the party and I didn't notice him. Or I guess no way he's dying. But, you know, like if he was somehow yeah, connected, point, if they if yeah. at the beginning of the party, he was there making a robot, you know, and then yeah. um, and someone said, hey, you got to wash that hair. Come on. It's a party. Then there's something. Charlie. Yeah, and I'll also imagine this possibility that they filmed what they thought was the movie, start put it together, and yeah. they're like, okay, it's 64 minutes long. We need a brand new, yeah, that's just true. We need yeah, to film yeah. two or three scenes Burgess that last Mer- yeah. Burgess- three minutes each. Let's get a guy with a fez. Let's get yeah. Burgess um, Meredith with the chickens too. I've you know? got access to a hair salon because my buddy works there. <laughs> and then, then you've got eight more minutes of movie or 10 more minutes. Of yeah, movie. that's what it was. You're absolutely right. Yeah, you're right. All right. I don't know for sure. Just guess. No, I mean, that's it reeks of that. It really does. Uh, the guy who got run off the road <laughs> comes by Chester's house and sees Bobby and Lisa in the police car. And he's like, there you go. Great police work. That's what I like to see. Um, the, the, uh, but then the cops let Lisa and Bobby go home, telling them to inform the police if Chester and Miriam don't show up by morning. And, um, the guy from the station wagon is not happy. 
He is not happy. Uh, in the car, Lisa asks if Bobby believes her. He changes the subject, uh, rem- <laughs> recommending that they go have an avocado sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first first avocado sandwich reference of many. <laughs> uh, now uh, here we go. Yeah, and some guy's taking a bath with his dog. Is this guy Russian? Or does yes? <laughs> okay, he's Russian. Uh, right? I think, so. I think Turkish. So. Tur- oh, Turkish. Turkish. Maybe it's Turkish because yeah, he has a fat. Yeah, Turkish. You're right. You're right. All right, the Turkish guy. <laughs> um, he's sometimes Russian. he's Turkish. Blob comes under the bathroom door. Um, the, so the guy throws a phone through the window. Um, does the dog get it? Does the dog get eaten by the blob? I Can't don't remember. know. He's I pulling out a implied. shoe that the blob has. Yeah. And then after the phone through the window, it seems like naked running in the street happens. Like, yeah. Quite. Uh, do we ever see the whatever? Uh, hopefully the dog. And survived. why the phone? Do you know, guys? Wide thro- phone through the window, um, just so then he could jump out. I guess he was priming the window for uh, for his exit. With that's life's mi- one of life's mysteries. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, we almost. I mean, it's almost like full frontal nudity with this guy too. Like <laughs> this guy was shameless, yeah. man. Anyway, he starts running through the streets naked. The police pull up to him and tell him to get into the car. So this is yet yet another just random character, but at least, uh, like Ava was saying, at least it's stretched out a little bit instead of just one scene. We we see this guy a lot. Um, Yeah. So it's soon clear that Bobby doesn't believe Lisa as they walk into the surprise party for Bobby. He's given a crown and carried around the room. They got a lot of people at this party. This is just filled with uh, revelers. You know, everyone's going crazy. They throw Devil him- Master S. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, yeah. yeah, they throw him on a bed. Um, but Lisa, she's still going nuts about the whole blob situation. No one's taking her seriously. Uh, Bobby blows out the candles. There's a guy next to him in an ape suit. Um, he, yep. Bobby goes up to find Lisa, who's up in the bathroom. He agrees to take her home, leaving his own party. And the guy in the ape suit is not happy. He is not <laughs> happy that Bobby's leaving this party. Charlie. <laughs> Did you guys at the beginning of the movie they're they're setting up for this party and they're mentioning would it be great if Bobby actually came and we want Bobby to be here but I don't know if he's going to make it. So apparently it's getting pretty elaborate with all these people invited. Later no one worked to get Bobby to like it was just by chance that Lisa had this whole thing happen this night. Yeah. So he could have walked in at any time. This is a very minor point, but I just felt like <laughs> this is a huge surprise party they're planning, and no one did the work to get the guy out of the way until ready to spring the surprise. Yeah, in fact, even when they're going there, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like Lisa was consciously guiding him towards the party. It's like they just no. ended up no. there. It's just <laughs> random. Whose house yeah. is that? Who lives there? No, we don't know. I think it's Lisa and the one yeah. who looks like Cheryl Ladd that is not Cheryl Ladd. Yes. All right. So Lisa yeah. lives there. So that's Carol, why they're Carol going. Lindley. But it seems only by chance they didn't go back to Bobby's place. Where, is and that... imagine the disappointment. If they had gone to Bobby's, there would have been this party with 50 people and a gorilla man just <laughs> hanging out. You, uh, amen. Amen. Huge cake they bought for him. All right. So driving home, he again suggests that he makes her an avocado sandwich, this time with bacon. Um, now we cut into um, the naked guy at the police station making a phone call. The police discuss how uh, how the other cop hasn't responded since he was last seen at the big drain pipe. Also, the, the barber's been reported missing, plus a lot of people being reported missing. The sheriff suggests that everyone's at the bowling alley for the big, big tournament, <laughs> of course. It's of course. Obvious <laughs> explanation. That's why he's sheriff. That's why he's the sheriff. That's right. Uh, now Bobby and Lisa once again pass <laughs> the station wagon guy as they're trying. They're so they're trying to get through some alley. Yeah, I had t- trouble buying this uh, scenario. Oh, uh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the scenario, Charlie. Oh God, I- is he building a roadblock out of the soda cans <laughs> in case they drove down the alley? 
or he just happens yeah, to yeah, be I think so. he's emptying oh, his car oh, at that maybe, moment. It's just bad I, timing. Or maybe he's buying supplies for the bowling, bowling alley. But no, why, why put them in the street? I mean, carry one case over at a time. It, it just seems like, like you said, you cannot buy this. And even in a movie like this, it, it, the chances that the two people he's after and who have wronged him in the past by driving over his stuff are going to drive exactly by this one little tiny, like, narrow, narrow uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so no they have a showdown. Bobby's refusing to back up. The guy's refusing to move the drinks, and so Bobby runs right over him. Oh man! Woo! Now, uh, now we meet some <laughs> some guy. Are they hobos? I don't, who are these guys? Burgess. That's Burgess Meredith, right? The yep. trainer yeah. from Rocky. Larry Eggman is one of the. the oh, Larry too. was in there too. I didn't even realize it. Yeah. Yep. He's credited as a hobo. So they're hobos. They're there talking about how much they hate hippies. They're in a barn, I guess. The chickens are becoming noisy because the blob is eating them. Uh, one of them goes to check it out. The blob gets them. And then the other, I guess the other two get it too. That This is even less enjoyable than the barbershop uh, scene, I'd say. Tom? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I like the barbershop scene. It's, it's completely unexpected. It, it goes on for long enough that it becomes surreal so awkward. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's surreal this 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 is kind of forgettable the the hobos i think yeah, yeah. but i like burgess meredith though he's he's great he's Happy pretty funny yeah they're totally making stuff up there they're like where'd you get yeah. that serapi and he's like i stole it from bullocks yeah. or like the department store it's he must have just been making stuff up and the other guy's teasing about peeking under his serapi and <laughs> yeah, but it, it it is totally phoned in, and they could have busted that thing out and like that the whole thing out in like an hour. Especially since they filmed some of the blob attacks in like silhouette, and mm-hmm. it's as quick as you can do it. You can hear Hagman saying "Good enough" after each take. <laughs> yeah, um, he wasn't even there. Now Lisa starts snuggling yeah. up to Bobby. He's behind the camera. So he says, uh, "Heck with the avocado sandwich, eh?" Because he thinks they're gonna get amorous, is that that's what's going on there, Tom? I think so. Yeah. They, they pull over. Now that's is that Bobby's house, where they pull over. He lives there, where she went to see him, where he was um, developing the film. That's where he lives, I guess. I I assume so. Okay, and it it's located not, in a way that they can not. see the campfire being uh, you know lit by the uh, Boy Scouts. Um, Lisa gives him a present. They embrace. What did does he open the present? I can't even remember. Was there anything there? Yeah, none of us. I think he did. Uh, yeah. What What was it? Uh, I, I can't, can't remember. remember. All right, listeners, uh, let us know on Twitter. <laughs> what What did Lisa give Bobby in the truck? So then the blob <laughs> descends upon the car. Lisa sees it. She rolls up the window. The blob starts to engulf the car. Oh no! Come on, take hold, take hold. <laughs> Bobby so screams good. at the car because it's not it's not turning. Right? That's why he's mad cuz like the engine won't yeah. start. They yeah. accidentally turn the air conditioning on which causes the blob to retreat, but they don't even realize it. They just know the blob has retreated. Take hold is one of our favorite moments, huh, Charlie? Yes, I, that that's a that's one of our memories of this and you know I don't know if you guys felt this way, but when all the chaos is happening, they the shot on the air conditioning wasn't incredibly tight, and I just sort of assumed that the air conditioning got clicked on, and also I kind of knew that Blob didn't like cold, but yeah, that, for my money, it wasn't done that well. Yeah, it's <laughs> I subtlety. Know. I don't know. They're going for subtlety, you, you don't, Charlie. You don't really notice at the so. time. Yeah. After the fact, you can put it together when they mention it again, but... Yeah. Well, they kind of, at the time, they kind of the I fence, think but... I, I said to Tom, I mean, again, it was like I couldn't, I didn't actually see what happened, but I remember saying to him, "What did what make it retreat? Was that the air conditioner?" Because I vaguely remembered, obviously right. from the first movie, that it's the cold, you know, like that keeps the blob contained. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and, but and like, if I hadn't even had yeah. that context, I don't know that I would have been uh, like. It, the way that scene is like set up, I wouldn't have necessarily figured out why that 
the blob retreated. Like the only reason I put it together was because I had seen the other movie. Yeah. So, borderline exactly. brilliant because Larry Hagman <laughs> puts us in the same predicament as the two main characters. We don't know Ooh. either. Ooh, Good cop. You know? All right. <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy in the gorilla suit stops at a gas station. There's no one there, so he starts filling up. Um, then he goes inside to the store inside. The phone rings. He answers it and just makes ape noises and then hangs up. Uh, he, and then he just starts stealing stuff. He just starts looting from the place. The girl's not happy about it. She's not going to put up with it. She's like, look, st stealing gas is one thing. Or, <laughs> but stealing is another. Yeah, taking gas without <laughs> paying is one thing, but stealing is another. Um, then Lisa and Bobby come to that station telling about what happened. Bobby calls the sheriff from the payphone. The ape suit guy doesn't care about Lisa's hysterics. He drives away, leaving his girlfriend with Lisa and, um, Bobby. You notice he put the mask on before starting to drive? Oh, yeah. That's good. In, in anger. But then in the next shot. Drive away with my mask on. Next shot, he's not wearing the mask. He's taking it off, and he drives right into the giant blob on the highway. Blob, is the blob always getting bigger? Because I feel like it just, it, depending on what they were able to do in any scene, it, it very fluctuates in size. Charlie? Depends on what they were able to do, I okay. think. Okay, yeah. just checking. Yeah. But yeah. there is at least the, like it was in the sewer, you know, and then it came up through the sink. So it's kind of like traveling. There's some connection. Sort of. Yeah. But in, you can in see, in, like, you know, one of the one of the oddities, of, like, I think what's interesting about the other movie is that the blob always has the same consistency. But in this movie, it does not. Because when it's coming in through the sewer or whatever, it's very watery. Yeah. And, yeah. like, I mean, it, it's like, it was just, it was something, like, it didn't bother me, right? But, like, it was interesting to see that kind of, like, depending on, you know, like, like you can kind of like as it's getting bigger, you're just kind of assuming like, well, there's more of it off screen that I'm not seeing. And it's just like snaking through yeah. these strains or whatever. But like it, it's it's much more of a, um animate object than like than the original blob, which feels like kind of like this inanimate object that just like yeah. like, you know, it was like incidental that it was like swallowing up this whole town right this one has a first yeah. this one has a vendetta really yeah. right yeah. because he's like actively going he's like reaching out reaching to out people. To people yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so bobby lisa and then the girl who was with the ape um they're told that the sheriff's at the bowling alley so they go to drive there but first um they see the gorilla guy getting engulfed by the blob and um and she goes up to try to save him and I guess she dies too yeah oh yeah heartbreaking yeah Bobby and Lisa get to the bowling alley stay in the car says Bobby no says Lisa they both go in there they ask everyone for the sheriff they pass a waitress and um the poor waitress all her food gets knocked over uh Bobby grabs the microphone and starts calling for the sheriff he tells them tells everyone <laughs> there to leave. No one. Yeah, he's like, st it's not a big hurry. You've, there's plenty yeah. of time. But everyone, please time. leave. No one's paying any attention to his warnings over the PA, which is great. We see one guy uh, bowling in a wheelchair too, which is uh, which is wild. Was he a priest or was he just dressed like one? Well, it was. I mean, we don't know for we sure. We don't know if, he was, if he's been but, ordained, but, but it, was he? Were we he meant to believe like he's what? a? Uh, okay. <laughs> So we see a priest hey, in a wheelchair. No reason, there's no reason to doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the movie had gone into the the history of that character that we see one more time. Um, okay. So then Bobby is brought to the back room um, of the bowling alley. And oh no, who happens to be the owner of the bowling alley? The station wagon guy. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> <I> mean... <laughs> Meanwhile, there's some problems with machines. The the bowling alley machines are all messed up. There's a couple of workers back there. They get engulfed by the blob. We go back to the, the police station. The naked guy has been given some clothes that don't quite fit him. They return his dentures to him and tell him he can go home. Back to the bowling alley. The bowlers are all angry because the machines are broken. Another employee goes to check it. He's killed by the blob. More people getting killed by the blob. Meanwhile... 
The, the, the bowling alley owner refuses to believe Lisa and Bobby. <laughs> what do you want with my life? He asks them. <laughs> <laughs> I also like at the, just before that, you know, when you were mentioning naked guy in jail, we're reaching the culmination of the movie here. <laughs> the big showdown with all of our heroes. And he is told that he is signing paperwork to indicate that he didn't leave any valuables behind in the station. That's what the, that's what the officer tells him. He's like, okay. So you see him doing minor paperwork at the desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Major change of pace right there. Yeah. Major change of pace. <laughs> so the blob comes like gushing into the bowling alley. Ava, like you said, just like it's watery at this point, just coming through the, 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 the bowling alley. Everyone's going nuts. We, the, the priest in the wheelchair is being pushed so quickly that he falls off the wheelchair. Poor guy. Now, um, but again, we go back to um, the police station. Yes. Imagine if someone had been bowling for a perfect game, uh. and this was like the, the last bowl, <laughs> and everyone is you know t- intently watching, and right as it's about to go, Tentacle comes out. Uh, they, that would have been right up their alley. That's their style of humor too. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. they didn't do that. Let's now we cut back to the police station where the sheriff starts mediating an ar- argument between some citizens and his deputies. This is good stuff. What seems to be the matter? You first. Well, sir, essentially there's there's an emergency, and we've been trying to get these guys to come you down. Come to down. Wait a minute. To come down because uh, uh, people are freaking out. Now you. Sheriff, the two kids come in here. They come barging in like we're supposed to do exactly what they say. I told them they had to wait for you. If they don't, you know, there's no law and order. What is he doing still here? Well, Sheriff, he says there's something at his house trying to eat him up. Eat him up? All right. That's good stuff. That's a fun moment. The sheriff doing what he does. That's good stuff. That's it's really great. Good. Yeah. Uh, we cut back to more chaos in the bowling alley slash ice <laughs> rink. Ava, what do you got? I just have to say, when this whole scene is happening, I said to Tom, this just reminds me of Airplane, where they keep, where they show people like, you know, when they're in the panic and they're like running and, mm. and then you see the same cuts over and over again. It's like the same people running. Like it, like, like it just felt so much. Like I just, it just felt like that. Like yeah. it just reminded me so much of that movie. Yeah, a it's parody fun. of the disaster movies with yeah. just citizens yeah. freaking out and extras freaking out. Yeah, I love that chaos. It's it's yeah. really fun chaos. Oh, it was great. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I mean, it was that that the the whole sequence there is actually pretty well paced. Like it's you're in like you're. In, you're entertained, like yes. you know, like I was, I was, you know, I was paying attention to the movie. At, <laughs> I was much yeah. more, I was much more entertained uh, this time through than I remember from uh, the the first time we saw it, fif- like 15 years ago at this point. Um, wow, wouldn't it be? It was the first shock marathon, right, guys? Yep. Yeah. So that yeah. was like o t- o one o two something like that. Um, That's amazing. The police arrive, Bobby, Lisa, and the station wagon guy go into a booth above the ice rink. They use the PA system to communicate with the people outside. Uh, two of Bobby's friends say they want to save Bobby <laughs> and the sheriff. The sheriff, do you guys notice this? The sheriff uh, says, like, no, no, guys, guys, guys. And it's like, go put on some helmets so you look official and then you can run in there. I like yeah. Yes, That's yes, so that was good. such a great moment. What a nice touch. <laughs> it's really good. But you don't look good right now. <laughs> we'll let it go in a minute. Um, Bobby tries zapping the blob with the electricity from a wire, but uh, the, no, it has no effect on it. Um, we see lots of shots of the sheriff and deputy walking around. They finally find the blob. They try shooting it. That doesn't work. One of the deputies gets killed. The sheriff runs away. Bobby spills some ice uh, in the booth. And they realize that the blob can't handle the cold. It's all they've figured it out. Meanwhile, the cops are planning to burn the place down as Bobby is trying to get to the switch that will turn on the machines that instantaneously freeze the ice rink, according to uh, Station Wagon Guy. That's an interesting yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, claim, <laughs> huh? <laughs> that's it. A- that's quite a claim. It, it probably would take hours, but <laughs> I, I love the sheriff is, is like 
everyone's dead in there. I just know it. <laughs> Let's yeah, blow yeah. it up. They're all dead. Let's do this. It's the <laughs> gave them like ten minutes to. Like... <laughs> Bobby, Bobby's swinging on ropes uh, to get to the the thing, and Lisa's impressed. You, there's one moment where you see Lisa, and she's like, "Wow!" as he's uh, doing his his rope swing to to, to save the day. Uh, with the bob, uh, blob getting closer and closer, Bobby turns on the ice machine. It works. The blob doesn't reach him. Um, but meanwhile, outside, a Boy Scout gives a lighter to the sheriff. So there, the lighter comes back in. Isn't that amazing? Wow. That's mm-hmm. unbelievable. Uh, it's all connected. Bobby stops them, though, just before they're out to burn the place down. And he brings it's them so... in. <laughs> Go. <laughs> like... You know, if you've ever seen like firefighters, you know, burn something down, it's very um, organized and <laughs> contained. It's not like someone give me a lighter, I'm gonna throw it. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. first Boy Scout who happens to be nearby. Hey, you kid. I, I, then the um, station wagon guy gives, comes out with a great line. He says, "It's gonna be a better world without this thing." I love that. That is Ooh, good. yeah. <laughs> um, the officers force then force the guy to leave the rink for like just because they're annoyed by him. It seems they're like you out of here, and then they <laughs> let a cameraman come in immediately after, and a Boy Scout sneaks in too. And now, <laughs> look, this movie was real good, but I mean the this is what what you're about to hear is what differentiates it from uh, all other films. Oh my goodness, the, the the cameraman sets up on the frozen blob with the sheriff. The sheriff who had nothing to do with the um, the victory. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> he was seconds away from ruining uh, everything they'd, they'd accomplished. But he's taking credit for what happened. And they say, Sheriff, why don't you tell us about what happened? And he gives the most magnificent speech you've ever heard. We're going to listen to the whole gosh darn thing. Here you go, folks. We have ever seen. Turn my lighter back. It is un- okay, wait. I should I should point out the the kids in the background at the beginning annoyingly asking for his lighter back. Uh, that's what that is. Let's hear it. You want comments? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, this is the most incredible thing that we have ever seen. Turn my lighter back. It is unbelievable. Hundreds of people have been killed by this shapeless monster what is it where did it come from outer space who knows it was stopped here by a simple chemical process the freezing system in the pipes of an ice skating rink and by the cooperation of everyone pulling together in a moment of common and extreme danger If it hadn't been stopped, this blob might have uh, devoured America, or perhaps even the entire planet. My uh, deputies and uh, the people did a uh, superb job. I have been in uh, telephone uh, communication with the President of the United States, (laughs) and he wishes me to thank everyone for their help in what shall go down in history as possibly the greatest personal danger to ever confront mankind. What? And then it freezes as he realizes uh, the light from the camera has melted the ice enough that the blob is now surrounding his foot. And and then the <laughs> end with a question mark appears on the screen with a question yep. mark. Oh man! Okay, that speech is so wow. good, and uh, fans of our films might recognize it as um, almost exactly what uh, Jim McHugh says at the end of River Beast. Ava, did you? That's a tough one for you to make the connection to. Did you notice that or no? Um. Well, Tom pointed it out. Okay. To me. Good. 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 Yeah. Um. But but um. I have to say that my favorite part of that speech is when he decides to to say that the that he's been in telephone communication uh, with, the, with president. the president of the United States, <laughs> given that we have actually seen him on camera the entire time since I know. they closed the blog. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's just lying. He's just <laughs> oh, there's so many great words, so great phrases, and the, the tone is 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 unbelievable because 
I think a kid could maybe watch it and just say, oh, this is like an all-American heroic ending. Yeah. Because it's subtle. It, it is. There's no innuendo. There's no, um, like, false vocabulary or anything like that. It's just, it can be, it's it's mock epic in a way, but it's just like. But a little casual in its delivery, and that's wonderful. Yeah, and, and it's kind of casual, like you said, and, it, and that's maybe what the sheriff had to make it up right there, and he wanted a moment of glory. So he just invents this thing, and it, <laughs> the tone is so nice. It's not that sarcastic and maybe not that cynical, and it's not necessarily trying to skewer all officials and policemen. I don't know what it is. It's just delightful to watch, and uh, it's, it's, so a, it's yeah. secretly subtle. Oh, it is. I think—, I think- yeah, I mean, I think that that's what what really sells it is that he is sincere in 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 this moment. This 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 policeman, the actor, is completely sincere in the way he reads the lines. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> and it's so and it's good. so so it's not it like it it just it's a really interesting tone to end the movie on. And then then also, I mean, I think that that anyone who is listening really needs to go like at least look at a screen grab of that of the of his face when he realizes <laughs> that his foot is being surrounded by the blob because that like it's just yeah. a perfect moment and he looks right up. into the camera it's just uh oh, it's delightful yeah and the end with a question mark like it's definitely we all know the answer to that question yes this is the end there will not be a sequel you know <laughs> <laughs> wow i can't believe like uh. wow do you know the history of the making of it, Charlie? You mentioned a, a Hagman interview. What? Tell us what you yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I saw him speak uh, on, a, on a YouTube video that um, someone at a panel asked him how was directing Son of Blob, and I, I think they were at a panel for some big film um, nice. or something. Maybe it was about I Dream of Genie. I, I don't know. It was about a big project where he did not expect to be asked about Son of Blob, and he said that they shot it in 15 days. Um, he said that he, through somebody he knew, someone just asked him, Hey, you want to direct son of blob? And he said, yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, I'll give it a shot, you know? And, um, he knew some actors who weren't filming anything at that time. And he was able to say, Hey, do you want to spend a day? You know? And I think he probably shot it like maybe around Malibu and maybe around where some of them lived. So they didn't have to go far. And it was like, they didn't even probably have to learn their lines cause they could sort of, ad lib or yeah. like hey we're a bunch of hobos let's like riff and do something mr yeah. meredith and he's like i'm game you yeah. know so that was what i heard about it uh, and i know the producer uh also produced the original and uh also equinox he's credited as well he might have came on board that once what a different it, like, tone finished, I, but... I don't even know if i've seen all of the original but just the tone is uh very different he, yeah, well, it was a different America, 1958 and 19, or you know, early 70s or whatever. Just, yeah. um, but paradigm shift. Yeah, paradigm. Ha- yeah, good, good point. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if he did it just to like cash in, or he well, had he- to make a sequel to keep the the rights to it. But I don't know, and I don't know why it had to be so low budget either. But um, it is, and that's Cause that's he- all I know. The original movie does end with a the blob, it, it with a question mark. Yeah, the, the original like that's movie. like very that's a like that's such a significant moment in that original oh, movie. It's I didn't like realize they jump the the blob in the North Pole and then the yeah. end and then it dissolves and it's a question mark. Uh, right. Okay. Right. So they're Good just point. continuing the uh, tradition. Interesting. Let's uh, let's get some reviews. Uh, Tom, start us off. Uh, it, it just <laughs> coming down from the, the speech yeah. is the speech is so glorious. I mean, I was, I was crying, you know, and it, the speech is this, the music swells, yeah. you know, and it's just marvelous. I, I mean, the whole, like the last like, like 15 minutes or so are, are great. Like then things are picking up, the pace is picking up and it's, uh, um, you know, starting to come together and, and really the opening sequence in the in the house with the couple and then Dick Van Patten and stuff, that stuff's all great too. Like the middle the middle third is is really slow and there's some moments here and there that are fun. But uh, I started to to not be happy like during the middle part and then it comes back obviously in the end. But uh, you know overall I, w- I was starting to lose lose it a little bit. There's too much failed humor 
in there and it, it kind of is off putting and too much ape costume guy, like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. He's not nice. Yeah. Ava, what is your um, review? Um, well, I think that it's a good thing that Larry Hagman stuck to acting and not directing. <laughs> Poor Larry Hagman. Um, because I don't, I, it was like, he was terrible. <laughs> um, but I mean, I think, you know, it is what it is. I, I, it's not like, this is obviously not any great cinema. It's, it's just hard because I really genuinely love The Blob. Like, I think that is a fantastic movie. I love Steve McQueen. I love the music. And actually, I think one of the things that, like, I was really disappointed by was the score for this film. It's like, it's just this awful, like... Generic. Generic, synthetic sounding stuff. And like, you know, like the 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 Blob songs are so so catchy. Like you're you you sit there and you're singing like Beware of the Blob after you after you've watched that movie and it's in your head for days. Yeah. Um. You know, and it's so so it's like so it's just very hard because it's like, especially because I have seen the Blob several times. You know, it's like one of those movies that I've actually seen more than once. Um. It's like this to know that this is the sequel is like, eh, it's kind of disappointing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, look, I came into the movie um, expecting to hate it. Like, all I remembered was that um, maybe I was tired when we watched it the first time. I remembered Take Hold. You know, mm-hmm. I remembered um, the, the, I kind of remembered the, the, the thing in uh, the Chester's tent in the living room. But I just, I just thought it was going to be a lot darker, a lot, like, maybe I've just been desensitized by by movies like uh you know devil as good as the devil master is their improv is so much harder to take than th- this yeah. improv because this is improv by professionals you know or war yeah. meters again i guess it's the standard cuz this was one of the first ones we did we watched this was the first marathon and sure we'd seen a lot of horrible movies but i mean the depths yeah. the depths to which we would <laughs> uh, you know yeah. go to <laughs> after that have caused me to suddenly look at Son of Blob and like, wow, the, you know, I, I, I don't even mind watching this ridiculous back and forth about a four hundred dollar haircut for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, so like, I was, I, I was. That's a good point. I yeah. found it re- slightly refreshing that I wasn't as um, unhappy with it as I thought I'd be. So again, I mean, that's faint praise. <laughs> don't get me wrong; it's very faint praise, but. Um, <laughs> You know, I can I can sit I could pretty much sit through that again. You know, and and I mean, in the speech at the end is one of the all time greatest moments in cinema. So we can't minimize that. No. Um, so <laughs> we got that. So that's that's my my review. You know, and it's different. I mean, it's not a it's barely a horror movie. It's you know, it's mostly just a, a comedy, really. Uh, yeah. So it's a different a different type of thing. Failed and failed comedy usually hurts. Again. I've been hurt a lot more by other failed comedy than I am <laughs> by this failed comedy. I, I yeah. mean, I think I have to say that in this one, those sort of like the failed comedy here is it's like, it, obviously it's all happening at a higher level, you know, than like, so, so it, it fails, but like, you know, it's still kind of a immu- like the, the whole, the cup scouts whole thing. Like it's, it's weird. And it it's like, it's good and natured, you, you though. You kind of don't get why it's happening, but it's kind of amusing. Like, it, it's just, it's not even like it, it necessarily fails. It's just like, it's more perplexing than anything else. Like, mm-hmm. why, why is, you know, like you, you, because you have to spend some time and like rationalize all these things, like that's what makes it, you know, yeah. like that's why the movie doesn't necessarily work, but, but it's still, it's still better done than a lot of other things. Charlie, your yeah, your review. It's failed, yeah. it's failed comedy where you're confused or you're trying to process it a little bit, which can be nice. If it's failed comedy where it's just like that's what she said kind of jokes or, or taboo things or just yeah. just something where there's no other level to it, then clearly the the like innuendo they're going for or something. The fact mm-hmm. that it's a little weird. It gives you something to sort of think about, and also it's not something you've seen before, so it doesn't feel like they have an agenda. Like one, two, three, put up your tent, you know. And it's like, <laughs> okay, it's it's kind of a funny song. It's not really funny. It's a little confusing, <laughs> but it's sort of charming, and you know, you, you're okay with it. And I also think 
it feels like the actors are kind of having fun and um sometimes that just imprints itself on the film and um yeah. Like the guys at the beginning, Chester's smiling the whole time. I love he seems Chester. like he's having a great yeah. time with and his, his wife too. They're, wife they're character. She's this. smiling. I love the way she talks, and she's you know gabbing with the cat, but it's it's, it's okay. <laughs> you just have to not have such you know. You have to kind of be in for okay. This is a casual movie. This is put it on and maybe just do other stuff or I don't know. <laughs> Watch it a few times to really let it sink in because it's very casual. Um, but yeah. it's fun. Yeah, it's so, up its time, but it's fun. And uh, speaking of of its time, it's early seventies. Seventy one, is that right, everybody? Seventy one, or I think that's what's on the end credits. Seventy one ish, and um, it feel you know with the hippie stuff for it's sure. Later. It's it's there, you know, in in a way that you you can even like a movie like Slash Dreams, you can kind of feel it's obviously different tones, but um, you can tell that it's of the same time. Right there, yeah, yeah, and uh, and so that's that's fun, and it's more of a it's a throwback to fifties monster movie more so than you know, which we don't do as much. We we're more like slasher type things, but uh, it's still fun, yeah. Charlie. It's a real throwback to uh, surfing movies, because um, when I was watching it, Teresa came in. She was like, "Oh, this remind the way that there's the the monkey costume guy." Just the, the ensemble, gorilla, I, yeah. It reminds you of Frankie and Annette style movie where there's a lot of hijinks. Um, there's jokes about elders usually. The mm. elders always look foolish in those movies, just the way that the bowling alley owner does. It's like the kids are cool, and there's like a jerk business guy who wants to yeah. take over that part of the beach and not let them surf there. And, you know, uh, so it had a little bit of that anything goes feel of the surfing movies. Yeah, mm. good call. Very good call. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's Son of Blob, um, and never call it Beware the Blob. Never. Nobody's no. allowed to call it Beware the Blob. It is Son of Blob forever, yeah, as far as I'm <laughs> concerned. Any, uh, any other, uh, points that you guys wanted to make? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've got the book right here. Uh, oh, let's see. Shock December. Um, so, s- Best Supporting Actor Nominees... We nominated uh, six people. I bet Ch- I bet Chester's one of them. That's and two of them are two from of Son of Blob. Wow. Here we go. Tom Hanks and He Knows You're Alone. Of course. Nikki Rourke and Fade to Black. Wow. Ninja and Slumber Party Massacre 3. Ooh. Gang member in Sleepaway Camp 3, Teenage Wasteland. Oh, yeah. We didn't do a lot of research here. The actor who portrayed Chester in Son of Blob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Dick Van Patten in Son of Blob. Uh, Give it, I, I feel like Tom Hanks won, but I wanted to go to Chester. Do you know who won? Oh, the gang member in Sleepaway Camp 3. Gang member in Sleepaway <laughs> Camp 3? Are you serious? What? What were yeah. you thinking? That's so Son of crazy. Blob got more love in uh, Best Supporting Actress nominees. Who do you think? You could guess, probably. Son of Blob, Best Supporting Actress to Chester's probably wife? Lisa. Who? Yep. Chester's, Chester's wife? wife. Chester's wife. Wow, wow, that yeah. opening scene like really made a major impact on us. <laughs> yeah, and Best Director nominees. We had uh, Mr. Lucio Fulci uh, <laughs> for The Beyond, Herb Robbins for The Worm Eaters. <laughs> imagine, the, Ma- imagine this yeah. ceremony. Wouldn't that be so much fun? <laughs> oh, Sally <laughs> Madison for Slumber Party Massacre 3, okay. Robert Harmon for The Hitcher, and Larry Hagman for Son wow. of Bob. I'm, I'm going to guess The Hitcher won that one, but... Uh... I don't. Re- I don't know. But who won? Tom, do you remember or Ava? Uh, we I, we I think we gave it to Herb, didn't we? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, we Tour did. So force. the Worm Eaters. Gosh darn it! Wow. de Force. Yeah. <laughs> Best director. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, now we've covered everything we need to about Son of Blob. It's on YouTube as we speak. It's on Amazon uh, Prime. You can uh, you can stream it. And like Charlie said, you put it on. You, you can leave the room multiple times. You're not going to miss out on much. It's okay. And who knows? You might just uh, happen upon uh, one of the, 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 the shining moments of the movie when you do walk back in the room. So for uh, Ava and Tom and Charlie, this is Farley saying we'll see you next month on the Shock Marathons podcast. <laughs>